lives my the street. Liberty sows its seed at Farm Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. Tonight, a little different view than normal. I am actually in the house. I'm in the guest room, in my slash office, my official Far Point Farm command bunker. And the reason I'm in here tonight is to show off a radio, a radio that I have had now for a few months. I, I kind of alluded to it uh, when I went to the Sevierville Ham Fest. It's a beauty, and I want to go through it with you tonight. I've got it hooked up to the uh, shortwave loop antenna and a long wire antenna so we can switch back and forth. But I just want to show you all the cool features, all the cool functions of what I think is one of the best shortwave radios ever made. So let's take a look at it right now. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Realistic DX302. This is one of the greatest shortwave radios ever built. And that is 100% my opinion, but it is just an excellent receiver. It is, it, it just, it's awesome. And not only is it awesome, but like some radios, maybe they sound good. Some radios, maybe they receive really well. And some radios, maybe they just look good. This radio just hits all three. It, it sounds decent with the built-in speaker, considering it's, you know, 30, 40 years old now. It looks like a piece of art. And it's built like a tank. And on top of all that, it receives extremely well. So I'm going to start with it right here. I'm just going to show you some of the features and functions. And I'll go through some of the uh, channel bands and we'll see if we can pick up. Well, we won't see if. I know we can pick up lots of stations. But let's go through it. Starting over here, we have our lower side band slash CW, upper side band slash CW, standby mode. And then we have AM and then we have AM with a automatic noise limiter, which is kind of cool. Finally, on the end here, we do have a spot for a external micro or external earphone, and I do love to plug in an old earphones and listen to this thing because it's just so sensitive. You can keep the volume really low and pull in those distant stations. On this side, we have selectivity, wide and narrow band. So on some of the shortwave stuff, you can just put it over to narrow, especially if you're trying to listen to modern ham frequencies and, and just modern radios, it helps to put it on narrow. This thing does also operate off of battery power. In fact, here's a picture of the back of it here. It has never had batteries in the case, so it is mint. It even had the battery covers, those like little plastic tubes that came with this thing. It was a 100% mint. So it has a battery test on and off as far as the lighting. You can turn the lighting off to conserve the batteries when you have batteries used. So in the case of an emergency, this would be an excellent like survival radio. Then you have an attenuator here. We can we can lower the dB, the overall gain here. I've left it on zero. If you lived in an area that had a close by clear channel AM station, a fifty thousand watt, or even if you lived like extremely close to a ten thousand watt or fifteen thousand watt station, then you probably would want to use that because it can kind of bleed over onto all the bands, and uh, that's something I hear in shortwave problems like with everything, especially if you add a long wire antenna, you're picking up all the wanted and also all the unwanted transmissions out there. And then this is where things get different from, <laughs> from a modern radio. A modern radio, you're just going to change your dial here and you're going to move it to whatever frequency you want. And this is way more complex than that. And I love it. It, it makes it so much more interactive. We have our band select. So we pre-select, right? I'm going to you can see the lights, the LEDs change here as I switch through these bands. So I'm going to put it right there, and I, you'll see you can actually adjust to the signal. So you're going to move to whatever you know area you want, and I kind of tend to move this roughly. And when I find a signal I'm interested in, then I can kind of fine-tune it. And then back, lastly, we have our BFO pitch, so this helps when you're in sideband mode to tune that in. We have this nice signal strength meter, which works perfectly, and the lighting is still working on that. And, uh, and then we have this, which is our fine tuning, right? This changes it. This silver selector band behind it, that changes us through the uh, bands all the way up to 30 megahertz. So a very well-featured radio, a very awesome-looking radio, and something that was far too nice to leave out in the garage. This is going to be here. It's hooked to that, uh, is it the MLR30 uh, loop antenna right now? But just off screen that way, there is an AB switch, and I can switch this to the long wire antenna that I eventually hope to use for uh, a ham radio rig, which will also be living inside. 
So let me go ahead and turn the volume up a little bit. Obviously copyright issues, but when it comes to AM and shortwave, not as big a issue, but we still have to be mindful of it. Oh, I got the RF gain turned down. Sorry about that. All right, and here we are on the AM band. And I'll just show you what I mean as far as Let's see if we can find a station here. You can see the signal increase. This is maxing it out, so we're getting some nice strong signals here. I was so furious yesterday that for the promo of the show. So before I move off to the shortwave bands, I'm just pointing out here that literally every 10 kilohertz, we got another station. The receive on this radio is just insane. I mean, it's just awesome, right? Now pair it with that beautiful uh, loop antenna that I picked up very inexpensively. And that's not high off the ground. It's just sitting on the side of my house. It's not even at the peak of it. And you have uh, the ability to receive stations from all over the world, including like all over the U.S. I mean, as soon as the sun goes down, we're talking, you know, this, the skip starts rolling in and the clear channel start bouncing off the ionosphere. And we get every 10 kilohertz I'm picking up stations. I'm going to make a video dedicated completely to AM skip or AM DXing, which is where, if you notice when I turned the radio on, uh, it was set to. It's where I live when I'm playing with this thing, which is often. It's pretty much on if I'm in the office editing videos or whatever. And so this thing just has that ability. And you, you just don't get it. You just don't get that with a modern radio. Right. All right, so let's move on. So the large selector, that's going to move us to the next. And so over here, the pre-selector, now we need to move that. We either roll in that. So we're going to go up. I'm going to roll this thing back. And you can see how quiet it gets, right? I hear nothing. Okay. It's really quiet. because I'm not on the right pre-select, so watch this. So as you roll through it, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit till we find a signal, but as you roll through it, you're adjusting this as well. You can hear the volume pick up. Should have looked to see what was on this time of night. It's kind of more fun to just poke around, if you ask me. So I'm going to move it again to three. We'll roll back down through the band. Now, uh, when they get up at the, uh, the meat tub and it's uh, roofy 
So picking up some uh, lower side band short way or ham talk pretty much here, but let's move up the band here and just give you an idea how that works. But let's move up the bands and get into some just regular national broadcasts from shortwave. Very strong signal at 5.8. Sounds like a religious broadcast at 5.8.4. All right, well, <laughs> dude, I could sit here and do this all night, which is probably the problem because I am going to sit. Here. <laughs> I am going to sit here and do this all night. I will make a separate video of scanning both the AM bands and some of the other bands just to let you know. Now there are some websites that show you uh, what should be transmitting at any one given time, but let me be quite frank with you, if I may, for a moment. There are about. Mm, 10 times more than what is listed on that website broadcasting at any one given time. There's a lot of pirate activity in shortwave. Not here in the United States, although that may change with current events. But there is a lot of pirate uh, broadcasts coming from overseas. Some political, some religious, some musical. Doesn't matter what it is. I love listening to that individual take on what's going on in our world. And so this is just the awesomest radio you're going to come across. Try to find one of these suckers. That's the problem. It is. Um, this was a. This was a like a diamond, sitting in a field, just glistening at me. When I found this thing, it was part of a dead key, or I'm sorry, that's kind of a harsh way of putting it. How about I say a silent key auction? And so this was just a pile of stuff. No one knew if it worked. They had only turned it on, plugged it in, and say, "Hey, it lights up." Now it is a little scratchy. You can hear by the stuff. And someday I might take it apart and clean all those contacts. But to be honest with you, it works good enough. And so I'm very happy with it. And I'm going to continue to use it just like it is. They did make a successor to this. One last model. And I could have bought one at the fair. It was 100 bucks. I should have. I didn't. And it was the DX3, I think, 94. 394. All digitized. Looked a lot like a scanner. About half the size of this thing. And I'm sure it works just as good or possibly even better than the DX302. The problem is... It wasn't a DX302. I wanted a DX302 since I first saw these things in the catalog as a wee young lad. And if you've ever had the chance to hold one or listen to one or play with one, soon you too will be addicted to it and need to have one of your own. The band select, the pre-selector, the tuning, all this not being digital, all this being old school. I mean, you do have a digital frequency readout, but it's all manual tuning and requires a lot of fiddling to get that signal just right. I like that part. In fact, it's my favorite part about this radio. Some guys and gals probably would become frustrated rather rapidly with that. But for me, it's what makes the DX302 the best shortwave radio ever built. With that, I'm going to say goodnight. My name is Eric, and this has been another episode of <laughs> Farpoint Farms Presents. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, perhaps you'll think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care. something